what could I have told you back in 2016? Let's imagine you and I butting heads on Twitter. What could I have told you that would have made you less skeptical about me as someone who is largely viewed as a Bernie bro? What could I have told you to convince you that I'm coming from this position, not, you know, um, in bad faith, but in good faith? What do you think somebody like me could have said to you, if anything, that would have convinced you back then? You know, you're you're a really straight shooting guy, clearly, and you're being honest. So I'm going to, you know, I'm going to, I like to do that too. That's the person I am. So I'm just going to respond honestly. I don't know if there was anything you could have said, because mm. at the point you start seeing other people as, I don't want to say enemy, but as like a, a bitter rival, right? I don't know that I was really listening that carefully. I was angry, and a lot of people were angry on both sides, right? And I and I tell people this, you know, I've been talking to people over the past week as part of, as part of the book release, and what I've said is, look, you know, sometimes the closest people, people you're in a relationship with, you know, uh, your close family, your parents, are the most bitter fights when you fight, and they can be explosive to the point of violence. Most violence is domestic violence that, that, that we see when these sort of close family fights that really, I don't know, like so there's a way that love turns to hate mm -hmm. and in, in, in a, when people are close because they care about the other person's opinion, right? I cared that the progressive community saw me that way. It hurt me. And it, but I take responsibility for what I did to get to that point. Um, so I think the answer to your question is a tough one. Now, how do we get people to do it? It's exactly what we're doing. Just you and me talking, um, seeing that we're human beings, we're coming from a principled place. There were a segment of people you and I know who just wanted to make trouble, who wanted to attack and harass. I'm not going to forgive or ask other people, hey, you got harassed and trolled and subjected to these horrible things. Hey, you just have to forget it. So it's more like we're here now. It's 2019 going to 2020. So what I would recommend to you to do and to others, what I would recommend to others is look inside yourself, ask yourself, what are your priorities? We are facing fascism, Mike. You know it and I know it, right? Mm -hmm. You know, there's one thing. You and I could have ideological differences about capitalism, about socialism, about political theory and social theory and economic theory. But – that's more really academic in, in, in some instances. What we're facing is like an existential threat right now to the rule of law and democracy or anything that's left of it. I realize, and I, I know you know this, that some people may say it's just the way the capitalist system is set up. But I'm just not really a political scientist or or really an expert on those issues. I was a house music musician, you know what I'm saying? I was a mm -hmm. jazz keyboardist who got into activism. I don't know enough about economic and political theory to make these sort of macro, um, you know, um, sort of analysis of what's the better system. All I know is I'm seeing children being shot in schoolrooms, in their, in their classrooms. I'm, I'm seeing migrant children being stolen from their parents. That is an atrocity. I mean, there is no greater torture. Those of us who are parents understand no greater torture than taking your child away and you don't know where they are and they, you may never see them again. You might as well kill somebody rather than do that to them. And yet our government is doing that in our name. We are droning babies in other countries from, from missiles that come out of the sky and blow up toddlers, okay? All these things are happening. So me, I'm just like a very direct action type of activist. Like I don't know the theory well enough, but I see these injustices. I'm just going to speak out about them. And I ask others to focus on that. Like, what do you want for 2020? Do you want to sit there and fight over whether, you know, uh, the DNC rigged it or not for the next three years? You're never going to win that battle. One person going to say it was rigged, and one person going to say it's not, and you're never going to get to a conclusion. And you and I have very strong feelings about this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I've learned to sort of set those feelings aside. Just focus on these injustices. You know, there is so much injustice around us that I just can't look backwards. I just took that rearview mirror and I smashed it. That's for me. For others, can do what they want to do. But that's that's my approach.